listening to the back. I don't know why I got banished to the back. I wanted to be out here to hear these things, man. You know, I, at home, sometimes I get ridden so hard on what I'm not doing right. <laughs> I'm kidding. My wife is here with my, my children. Uh, strong support system right there. My mother is here. My stepdad, my father-in-law, family, my brother-in-law. Wow. I'm just really glad to see you all here this evening. And this is important. And uh, I, don't, I don't want to make a speech, I just want to talk. Because I do have a lot of things on my mind uh, about our campaign yeah, and what it represents. Um, Thank you. Thank you. We are going to change the way politics are done where we live in North Carolina. <laughs> most of my adult life, most of my adult life has been, as you've heard, in service to my community. That's, that's the way I was shaped by the men and women who were in my life as I came up. Uh, you heard some of them talk before I came out. Um, that is what has motivated me to do the work that I do in every area where I have served as a police officer, uh, here with the American Civil Liberties Union, defending the civil liberties and rights of individuals all over this region. That's what it's been about for me. But much of my work at the ACLU, a lot of people don't know this. You've seen me publicly you know, going after some tough issues and some tough battles. What I've learned is fighting for civil rights and civil liberties can be a tough fight, but it's always worth it. It's always worth it when you commit yourself to it. But what people don't know is that so much of our work is legislative. I spent a lot of my time in Jefferson City working with and around the legislators there. And I'm gonna tell you something, and listen to me. What I've come away with in five years of going to Jefferson City to talk to legislators about proposed legislation or impacts of legislation that's been proposed, how it's going to hit people in the community that I come from, what I've come away with, and some of you in this room know this is true, is the sense that it appears to me that some of these legislators come together every year, gather themselves up, look at poor communities and communities of color, and say to themselves as a group, hmm, how can, what can we do this session to disempower them some more, to disenfranchise them some more, to bring more suffering to them. What can we do to devastate that community this time? Mm -hmm. And they pass law after law mm -hmm. designed to do exactly mm -hmm. those things. Mm -hmm. Disenfranchise, you know, voter, voter ID, as if voter fraud is a major problem in this country. It's not. Mm -hmm. The, the so-called war on drugs and the criminalization of a whole community of people. Criminal justice disparities legislated into reality. I was listening to Karan speak, I was almost moved to tears thinking about the real futures of so many of our young people right now. One in three African American male children born into this life will spend time in a penitentiary. One in three. That's not because we commit all of the crime. It has a lot to do with what has been legislated into law and how targeted enforcement impacts our communities. I feel compelled to provide a voice for our community in Jefferson City and back that up with action to create a community in North County where fairness and equality in every process is the norm and the reality so our families can thrive. How do you plan to do that? 
first, of course, you have to start with economic development. Everybody is suffering. Let me just back up before I get into that one more thing. To give you an example of what I'm talking about, in case you think I'm exaggerating, if you didn't know it, in this last session, while millions of people across the country and hundreds of thousands here in Missouri were still very much unemployed and struggling to make ends meet and feed children, the president rightfully put out some assistance that went to all 50 states. He said, look, you all who've been unemployed for 99 months or more, we know you still are struggling because the job market just isn't there. It doesn't mean you're lazy. It doesn't mean you're shiftless. It means there is no opportunity for you to sustain yourself economically because it's just not there. Here, some money for your state to give to you to help you out. There were four state senators here in Missouri four Republican state senators who did their level best to block that money, to block it, to keep children hungry, to keep families struggling. They did not care about that. That's what I'm saying. Where was our voice? Where was our representation? That's the kind of thing I want to fight. But back to economic realities. We have to create jobs. North County, the district in which we sit, State Senate District North, <coughs> State Senate District 13 is a viable place to do that. If you were out here a few months ago, or over at the uh, campus of, of UMSA where County Executive